Pastor Anthony. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, all right, this is going to be good. It was funny in the first service. I just um, I just got up here and just started rambling and chatting, and then and then when it came time to actually do the message, I had like ten minutes, and so um, uh, for first service. But uh, we'll say um, you know, and, and I don't want to do the same thing in this service, but. <laughs> I try not to make big announcements any like I, I try not to make big plans anymore because in the in the in the era of COVID, it's like you make a plan and then it then it, it has to then it changes and it changes again. You're just like ah, but you know at, at our prayer time on Thursday morning, um, on our live prayer on Facebook, which I, everybody watches, um, uh, I made I said something. I was like, well, it looks like we're gonna be meeting through the summer outside in, in this incredible tent. You know, I made that announcement. Because, you know, and there was reasons for that. Like, we can do 100 people outside. If you go inside, you can only do 50 people. Um, and then, like, right at that very same day, the the regs changed. And um, where, so, as of the same day, we're going to keep meeting outside. They actually announced that now uh, we can meet inside up to 200 people uh, per service. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily do math, but according to my, uh, you know, we can get about 80, 100 people on Sunday morning. You know, come on, come on. So, <laughs> so that's good. Oh, so, so this should be our, our, our last service. But I will say this has been such an opportunity. I give so much thanks uh, for the invitation from the Father to come outside because of this word that he's been stewarding in us to leave the, 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 the comfort and, this, and perhaps, you know, some of the sterileness of, of the four walls to begin going outside and to take on this invitation to become gardeners in this season. The Lord's been speaking so loud and clear. This has been such a, a marvelous honor to worship the Lord out, outside and to flood this entire valley with praise each and every Sunday. And, and, um, and just also want to give just a huge, uh, again, oh, just an amazing thank you uh, to Zolma and Horatio for blessing us with this tabernacle, this tabernacle of praise out here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll do this, I'll do this really quickly, but we also uh, wrote two big checks this last week, one for 2,500 um, uh, to uh, the orphanage in Kalima, where we were able to replace all the, air, uh, all the mattresses in the boys' homes that were damaged by the flood. Um, so we, we've got pictures and video of all the children jumping on their new mattresses. The orphans were very blessed uh, by that. We're also to help uh, pay for salaries there at, at the orphanage. And it was also cool because after we sent that gift, it broke something open, was what Walter was saying in the first service. After we sent that gift to 2500 something broke open. They had a, a subsequent $20,000 that came in from other donations and charitable contributions once that came through. So that was, that was big. Um, also, we sent off a, uh, a $2,500 to um, a, a school that we support in Uganda. And so we were able to put a roof on the school. Um, there in Uganda, and we we're also able to pay all the teachers' salaries uh, for one month uh, because they've been really impacted by COVID-19. Yeah, so thank you for your generosity. It, it's, that's pretty cool. All right, if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. I'm going to continue on, on a word um, that, that we began last week. I woke up last Sunday morning. I woke up in two different words, um, really, really from the Lord. This is, this, this, this is rare. Um, when I wake up, uh, when I wake up into this kind of kind of thing, um, and uh, and we're going to be studying this text, which the majority of you have read this text before, okay? Um, and yet, there's going to be something that, that that I feel like the Lord is speaking very specifically to us. And Ephesians six twelve, this is the text where it says, "We do not wrestle against flesh and blood." You know this one, right? Um, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. And so today we're going to be talking about that we wrestle and we overcome. So just declare, we wrestle and we overcome. Yeah, so it's not just you wrestle, you wrestle, you wrestle sucks to be you, right? <laughs> but like, we wrestle <laughs> and we overcome. That we are, we, are, we are called overcomers. And what does an overcomer do? An overcomer overcomes. That's just who we are. We're, we're, we're overcomers, okay? Now, um, when I woke up into this, I thought, yeah, wrestle. What, like, God, what are you saying here? And then, you know, I'm a generation, I'm, I'm a the, the uh, you know, born in the 80s, um, but 
like wrestle i think of like wwf later to become wwe and then like mma and like like that that kind of wrestling right so i think first century wrestling like when paul wrote this letter to the believers in ephesus and he's like you know of course so this letter was written to believers in a literal place like it was written to them it wasn't written to americans so of course when when he's writing to them saying like you're wrestling each other thinking that each other is the enemy but your enemy is not each other because your enemy is not flesh and blood. There's nothing that we can get out of that, right? Like, we can't relate with that at all, right? Like, wrestle each other. Like, we don't fight each other. We only fight demons, right? Like, you know, like, like and so I was trying to research, like, what is going, like, wrestle. What does this mean? So I, I looked it up in the Strongs, um, wrestle. And, and what it said is, what it said is that, that wrestling is, is done with, with two parties, okay, two opponents, and the way that it is won is when one is able to apply pressure to one's neck to force him into a place of submission. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, there is an attack against the neck within the body of Christ. Immediately thinking of uh, George Floyd, you know, who was, who was brutally murdered because of what? A wrestling move. You know, a wrestling move that were th that particular move, if it, like, that we, like that, that's illegal in the MMA. To, to do a, a, it's like, an, it's, it's an illegal wrestling move to put somebody in that kind of compromised position for that, for that length of time when somebody cannot breathe. So it's actually like a, a, an, an illegal wrestling move, that kind of force, that kind of pressure against somebody's neck where, where they're, they're in submission. There, there's, nothing, there's nothing that, they, that, 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 that you can do um, in, in, in that place. And this is what Paul says, that we wrestle. So, like, for this reason, like, all of this stuff that's, that's taking place, um, most likely, if we're honest, that most of us here, to some degree, are feeling pressure. It's like we've got good theology, but then there's what we're feeling. And, and I don't know about you, but how many of you, it's like you know the truth, but then there's what you're feeling and facing right now. You're like, look, I know who I am, and yet, uh, I don't like how I feel. Like, how do I flourish with these kinds of feelings? And this is what Paul is talking about. Like, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but you're wrestling against something that's spiritual. It's, it's unseen, and yet it's, it's very, very real, and you're, and you're, and you're feeling, and it's, and it's, it's, what is it? It's a rulers and authorities. It's cosmic powers. And, and the, the Lord says, this is attack against the neck. You apply pressure against the neck. And the body goes into a place of submission. This is what the Lord said. He said, um, the enemy is trying to separate the head from the body. And, um, and, 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 and then he began speaking to me. You know, it's really, it's really the head, right? Christ is the, the head of the church. This is Ephesians 5.23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. It's Ephesians, um, it's Psalm 133. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like the precious oil poured upon the head, and then it runs down the beard and 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 that's your neck right down onto the shoulders down upon the body this is the flow of the anointing this is this is the this is the the father's paradigm for how things flourish there is an honor and there is a submission and there is this place of headship and the body is is the place of Christ and the church it's this place where Paul talks about uh, the relationship between a husband and his wife and what does this attack look like? It's an attack of dishonor and accusation. And this is what we looked at um, last week. If we're wrestling two opponents, okay, there's you and then there's an enemy and there's only one. There's one enemy. We wrestle against one enemy with many manifestations. Okay. So Paul's saying, hey, Ephesians. Stop attacking your brother. Why? Your brother is not the enemy. Your brother is, is flesh and blood. It's time to recognize who the enemy is. And this is what we talked last week. Who's the enemy? It's John 8, 44. He's the father of 
lies. He is the devil. He is a murderer from the beginning, holding to no truth. Why? There's no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. This is where we're talking about that what we're in right now is an info war. It's a war of information. And in this time, the enemy's coming to the church trying to get us to do what our first mother and father did in the garden when they decided to trade out revelation to eat from the tree of information. Why? Because when, that was the trick of the enemy. He came and said, look at this. Look how good it is. God doesn't want you to eat it. Why? Because he's hiding truth from you. Look at how ironic that is, that the God of truth is hiding truth from you. What the enemy is saying is that, that, that God is lying to you, and if you trust me, if you take this, eat it, let it come into you, if you'll take and eat of this, that, you, that you'll be like God, and that's why God doesn't want you to eat of it. And when they took the fruit, and it looked like it was good for the, to the eyes, when they took it and they ate it, all of a sudden they stepped into this place of of information and with that was radical shame and condemnation and they traded out their revelation their identity of who they were for information this is what the father of lies does he brings lies and as lies when we receive it it brings shame it brings division it brings condemnation and it robs us of our authority it robs us of our identity and now we cannot function and flourish on the earth as a gardener now we fall into this place of surviving surviving and when you're a survivor in, in this place you can't really be a son now, now all of a sudden it's like i gotta make something of myself i gotta prove something i gotta show everybody i gotta show everybody what i'm capable of doing i gotta i i, I gotta i gotta i gotta and there's and, and and what happens there what happens there that in this place of we can have good theology and we have good beliefs and we can have good good morality but there's this disconnect between the body and the head. There's this disconnect that we can come into as a church, that Seattle Revival Center could come into this place of disconnect between Christ and the body, that this is what the enemy's doing. He's wrestling. He's wrestling to do what? To cut off headship, from the, to cut off the anointing that Christ, right? That Christ, it wasn't Jesus' his last name. Like Darren Stott, Jesus Christ, Right? Christ, it was a title, the anointed one. That what the enemy wants to do is remove headship from the church. Yeah, why? So that now, all of a sudden, a new head can take the place of Christ. That there would be a body without the anointing. And it's not that we don't function. We, we're, we're, func we're functioning, but from the wrong programming. The Lord was speaking to me about artificial intelligence and that we shouldn't be freaking out right now about robot intelligence, but we, should, but we should be on guard. This is what Paul is saying here. Why is Paul saying all this? Why do we even have this in our Bibles? Paul is saying to the Ephesians, wake up, you guys. There's a battle. There's, a, there's an attack. It's an attack against the neck. It's an attack. Uh, um, it's not flesh and blood. It's prince powers. It's, it's powers. It's, it's, it's an attack for intelligence. It's a place to remove um, the headship of Christ, that, that there would be a body with the wrong head, so that when the body speaks, it's not speaking from the mind of Christ, but it's speaking from some sort of ulterior motive and agenda, that it's speaking from some other uh, paradigm, from some other kind of thinking. This is what I felt like the Lord was saying. It's, we've, got to, we've got to look at whose table we're eating at. And that if we look up, if we see any other banner that's not the banner of the Father's love, we're at the wrong table. Why? You are what you eat. Yeah, that it's not about belief, believe it or not, because Jesus did not come that we would have belief, but he came that we would have life. And that's where when we look at the church, we got to say, are, it, are, the, are their beliefs right? No, no, no. When you look at the church of Jesus Christ, is there life? Is there passion? Is there power? Is there the fruit of a body that's connected to the right head? Because what the enemy wants to do is he wants to lop off your head so you never have to think for yourself. You never have to speak for yourself. That everything you say and do, it's just, 
is you're just sharing. You're just sharing what somebody else created. That, oh, that triggered me, so I'm going to share it. And then it goes out like a, like, a, like a fishing hook, and it triggers somebody else. And, it, ah, and, and, and you've got these patterns, and you've got these people, but their heads have been lopped off. Why? Because they didn't come up with it. They, didn't, they, they don't even know we came up with it. You don't even know who the author of some of this stuff is. And we share, and we share, and we share, but we're not taking the time to think for ourselves to think and to reason together and to, to commune and to, to even spend any time with the Lord. You don't have to spend time with the Lord when there's Google. You don't need revelation when you've got an information machine. And, and this is the great compromise of our generation is to say we don't have to be a revelation generation because we can be an information generation and we can trick people by triggering out their emotions. But that will not work. That will not produce righteousness. And, and we will even give up this, 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 this attempt to see the king of righteousness within a generation if we believe the lie of the enemy that it's Washington, D.C.'s job to legislate righteousness. No, no, no. It's the role of the Sadiq, of the righteous, to, to execute the righteous justice of God so that we could live in a lawless culture and still see the worship of Yahweh because the government of, of God's kingdom that comes down and rests upon our shoulders. Headship really, really matters. And, and it's time for us to recognize that you can discern the frequency of dishonor and accusation, but to see that that is the spirit of the anti-Christ, the anti-anointing, the anti-head. To get you to do what? To get you to attack flesh and blood and to get you to join with the enemy. What the enemy wants to do is he wants, it's like the, the, the vision that Rick Joyner received of the hordes of hell, all the demons that were riding on the land. And who were they riding? not horses. They were riding Christians. And what I'm concerned about is I see Christians that are being manipulated by demons. They're not thinking for themselves. They're not thinking I'm going left or right. But there's a demonic pressure. There's a philosophical anti-Christ spirit and pressure that is coming against the church to get us to, to rob us of our voice, to get us to rob us of, of the Lord's voice, of the prophetic voice. And I'm telling you, it's time for us to stand up from every table, to from every camp and to say that this camp will not define my identity, that I am a son and daughter of righteousness. I am a son and daughter of the Lord most high God, and I will find my voice. I will speak a thing. If you want to share what I'm saying, great, right? But I'm not going to be used as a pawn, as some sort of political pawn, what, I don't care. Like I said it last week, you go far enough to the right, you go far enough to the left, you'll find the same principality, a puppet master manipulating people that should not be manipulated. We are brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the most high and holy God. Just declare head, head, headship matters. Yeah, fathers matter, husbands matter, authority matters. It does. It, 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 it really, really does. Capitol Hill. Capital. What does it mean? It means head. You have Seattle. It's surrounded by seven hills. Capital is called the Head Hill, right? Um, that's what you go to the, the head of Washington State. You go to the capital of Washington State. You go to Olympia. It's the, it represents in the natural, in the symbolic, a place of government for our state, Olympia. It's the, the capital, uh, the capital uh, uh, city. You go to Capitol Hill. It's it's representative of, of headship. And then what do you have? You have the Lord releases this word um, last Sunday, and then on, on, the, on the same day or the next day, they change the name to chop. You have head chop. What do you have there? You have a place where there's a lack of government, where the police are not even allowed to interfere, that, um, that, 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 uh, that, it's early, early, early Saturday morning, two people shot. Police couldn't even get to the people. Why? A, a violent protest rose up. So now we've got a local rapper who died because of a lack of government in this particular area that's being celebrated by a part of, 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 of government. Yeah? W what do you have there? It's a battle, you guys, for headship. And that what we can do is attack flesh and blood and that'll make us feel good for a second. What's happening is spiritual. It is 
cosmic. It is a prophetic drama that what you see in the natural is a mirror as to what's taking place within the spirit. And we are wrestling and there is pressure and it's rulers, authorities, cosmic powers, and present darkness, spiritual forces, evil in heavenly places. And the saints of God said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, well, we, were, we were born for this. And how do we subvert these demonic paradigms? We subvert them with faith and honor the currency of heaven. That we don't, we don't play with the enemy. We don't, we don't allow the enemy to trigger us. We don't play these political games. We're not going to allow the Republican Party to manipulate us. We're not going to allow the Democrat Party to manipulate us. Why? That's not our party. Our party is a kingdom party. Hey, vote for righteousness. You need to vote. Don't be passive. Don't be the escapist, okay? Because if you do, I'll make fun of you. I make fun of escapists. We are here. <laughs> That's incentive, right? Yeah. Okay, you know, um, I'm having fun. We are here to engage, that we are the sons and daughters of God. And so we, we engage and we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that all these other things will be added unto us, that we wrestle and we overcome. Just declare, I wrestle, I overcome. And how do we overcome? With the blood, 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 with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Why? Because the blood reframes everything. The blood reframes everything. That Bill Johnson says that whenever you visit your blood without the past, you're visiting a lie. That's, that's why we say when we overcome the enemy, why? Because the enemy tries to use the facts outside of atonement to use those facts against you. The enemy comes us to, 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 to believers to get us to use other people's past against them without the blood. What is that? Again, that's partnering with the frequency of dishonor and accusation. And we overcome the accuser with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And how do we do this? We don't do this as 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 mature warriors that are screaming at demons. What I don't want you to do is, Pastor Darren said, this is cosmic. This is principalities and powers. So as soon as the service is over, we're going to get a people, and we're going to go to the back 40 with shofars, and we're going to scream at Lucifer, and we're going to take down a principality and cut off a dragon's head. Yay! <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what we're going to do. Why? Because in the kingdom, we do things differently that it's all different. It's all upside down in the kingdom realm. Like, like, like so then how, how do we do it? We don't do it by, pre by pretending to be mature. Why? The only way into the kingdom is like a child. If you got your Bibles, go here quickly. Psalm uh, chapter 8, verse 2. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. It says, through the praise of what? What does your Bible say? Sorry, Psalm 8, verse 2. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies. This is the strategy. This is the Lord's strategy that... that through the praise of children and infants, a stronghold would be established uh, uh, against our enemies to do what? To silence the liar, to silence the foe, to silence the avenger. Um, last night, Abigail woke up in the middle of the night, and she came to me, and she said, Dad, I can't sleep. So why? She said, there's a growling coming out of my wall. And um, I, I said, all right. So I got up. I went into her room. I, I realized that, that, that the growling was actually Peter snoring. And it was coming, it was coming through, her, through her wall. I said, um, don't worry. Daddy's got this. I'll go confront the growling. Went into Peter's room, kind of shook him a little bit, moved him around. <laughs> the growling stopped. The point was this. There was something that was terrifying Abigail. And she knew by her default programming, I'm a daughter. I don't have to do anything about this. Why? Because I'm in the house of my father. If there's a threat, that's his problem, not mine. 
we wrestle against one enemy. Yeah, and it's not, it's not our neighbor. We wrestle against one enemy, but we overcome. Why? Be because of the Son. Because of the Son. And this is what we need to hear in this time, that our responsibility as sons and daughters of God is to remain childlike. Not childish. But to remain childlike and to use what he has given us, to use our testimony, to use the, guys, we've got to start talking a lot more about the blood of Jesus. We can't have, talk, we can't have conversations about race without talking about the blood. We can't have conversations, we can't have conversations about, uh, you know, about, about who we are without the blood. Like, it's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. Why? Otherwise, we're using lies and we're trying to knit together lies in order to make sense. It is about the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. This is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is our role? We praise the Lord. Pastor Darren, how you doing? Praise the Lord, <laughs> right? Horatio, how you doing? Praise the Lord. That this is what, that, that no matter what injustice, we, there's, there will be pain. There will be heartbreak. There will be injustice. There will be these factors, and yet we can face all of these things, and we can face it with confidence and boldness, and we can face it knowing what? We're a part of our Father's household. And this is what I know about my God. He is faithful. Would you just declare that right now? He is faithful. We just declare, my father is faithful. My father is faithful. And it, 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 it's in this, remember the text that we read last week, we've got all these spiritual weapons. But what do we do with those weapons? We don't go out, out there and kick people's bottoms, do we? No, we go in here and we tear down every stronghold that would come to make Jesus powerless and God small. We take our spiritual warfare inside into our inner space. We, 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 take, we, 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 we take every vain thought, everything that's been framed in the imagination, and Paul says, and you demolish it. Why? So that a big God can come from your inner space into your outer space. That we will not see justice in this world until we have conquered the giants inside. And it is in this time that the Lord is calling for us to begin to execute justice internally, to find peace here so that there can be peace out here. Is that good? Yeah. Would you stand up with me? This is what I want you to do. I want you to hold out your, your, your hands really, really wide, really, like you're trying to describe that big fish you caught last summer to your friends. Oh, yeah. You know the fish. And I just want you to declare this out loud. Big God. Big God. Now, just to bring everything into perspective, all right, all right, make a little, just do this tiny little wince, like you're trying to describe that little sliver that you got in your hand last summer. And just say, itty bitty devil. Now, just, just throw it like a cigarette because you don't smoke. Put it out. Put out your hands real, real wide and just say, big God. We declare, God, you will remain big in our mind, in our will, and in our emotions. We take captive every vain thought that would come from the imagination. We know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And we declare, we are children in the household of the most high God. We declare, God, you are faithful. God, you are good. And we declare it is Christ Jesus. He is the head of the church. That it is from his headship that his oil flows. And by faith, we receive the oil that flows from the head of Christ down upon the beard and down the neck and on to the shoulders and on to the body we receive. We receive the oil of peace right now. We declare God is faithful and God is good. And we might feel disconnected, but we declare by faith we are connected to the head. We are the body. We are branches. We've been grafted in. We declare life and life abundantly. We declare no fear, no chaos. No turmoil. We declare we are not of this world. We are aliens just passing through. We declare the glory 
the splendor and the majesty of Yahweh. We thank you, Father, that you've equipped us for such a time as this. And we will fear no evil because you are with us. I just declare this over you. Your Father is and forever will be faithful. You have a faithful heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, everybody said. That means that you agree with me. And everybody said. God bless you. I love you guys.